In this episode, we're going to do propane forced air heaters, the torpedo style, how they work, and how to fix them if yours is broken. And if you have a uh, kerosene style one, I also have a video on that, so I'll put a link below in the description, but stay tuned. Okay, I've already got this ripped apart a little bit. I kind of set it back together so you guys can see. I already know what's wrong with it, but the basic idea of these propane heaters is you have a fan at the back, you have a spark plug, and you got propane. So you light the propane, it squirts out, the fan blows it, big flame, shoots heat out the front. Now I've removed my panel over here, my knob, some other things in here, um, and I've pulled out my fan in the back. Now there's two different styles, some will just have a, a you have screws right here so you can actually lift the top off and you can actually see this stuff. This particular style, I actually got to pull the fan out of the back. But in here, we can see our propane line and a bunch of wires. A lot of stuff we really don't need to worry about. A lot of stuff you don't need to worry about. Up here in the back, we've got a couple of different elements. We have our spark plug, the supply spark. We have our propane line, the supply propane. This is our thermocouple, and this is a heat sensor. And so the job behind this, this is our thermocouple, and what it does is heat from the propane flame actually touches the tip, and this is the same thing in your house furnace if you run off of natural gas or whatnot. Um, and it heats up, and when you got two dissimilar metals together, it creates electricity. And so that creates electricity and runs down the tube. Um, more on that in a second. This is your, your heat override sensor type thing. So if this surface back here gets way too hot, this right here will trigger and kill the system. So here's that copper thermocouple line and it comes down and it screws down into this little manifold block right here. And this is all part of it. But you got your main propane line right here that comes in, comes over, and comes to this little block. And what this does is this is what shuts the propane off in the case of emergency. And this is right here is just your propane line. This particular one just happens to have high and low so you can turn it up. And that's just what that is. But what the thermocouple does is, like I said, you heat it up and it creates electricity. So you probably won't be able to tell from looking there, but you have two different metals and, and there's an insulation in between. Um, and that's creating just enough electricity to create an electromagnet. So that will touch this doodad inside here. Um, and it has two different contacts on it as well. The outer side and this inside. And what that does is the way an electromagnet works is it's just a copper wire round around like a, a metal core. And when electricity is there, it creates a magnet. This gets sucked in and allows propane to flow. Once electricity is gone, say you ran out of propane or something blew out the flame, this would cool off, electricity would disappear almost instantly, and it would shut off the, the propane flow. And so on the back here, what I have is a, a bypass. So when you go to light this thing, you have to hold this in, and what that's doing is manually pushing this, manually pushing that to allow propane to flow. And then once this heats up after a couple seconds, just like your pilot light, where you have to uh, push and hold down the button for a minute, you're pushing this down, holding it for a minute, waiting for this to heat up to create enough electricity where you can let it go and hold this electromagnet. It can hold the little plunger back. But if flame goes out, the pilot goes out, bam, that shuts itself off. So that's something. Um, this rarely goes bad. The, one of the most common things to go bad is this thermocouple. And the way I know the thermocouple is bad is turn on the unit, the fan starts, I can see spark in there, turn this on, flame goes, but as soon, and I can leave this, you know, as long as I hold that, flame keeps going, but as soon as I release this, even, after, if, even if I hold it for 60 seconds, flame dies. That means there's not any electricity being produced by this, so the tip has been melted. Now this particular one is really easy. It just screws in, just unscrew it, and then snake the whole thing out of there. While I'm in here, pull the lead off the spark plug. I've already unscrewed the spark plug. And these have huge gaps on them. It looks a little big, but generally these have about a 3 16th, an 8th inch to 3 16th gap, um, depending on the machine. 
Just look that up, make sure that's gapped correctly. Other than that, the only other little thing that can go bad is that temperature sensor. And here I got a multimeter that beeps when the two contacts touch. So the way to test that is to pull the wire off one side or, or off both sides. And I'll just put my lead on there. And I'll just touch the other side with it cold. It should flow electricity. So if that tested bad and electricity wasn't flowing through, um, you could double test that by just tying the two wires together, um, making a jumper, connecting those, or, or just taking this wire and this wire and just connecting them together because that's all that tr switch does. Test it, everything works properly. You can just replace your little thermostat right there. This one right here, what the best thing to do is, since I haven't bent this one at all, is to take the new one and just lay it aside the old one and just reform our bends. And this one, these, this particular one has something unique that most don't have is a two little terminals on it like this and these just these just tie into the same electricity that's fed to the little electromagnet in here and they just run another operation, another function in the machine. So um, this particular one, a lot of times you can get universal thermocouples because they're pretty much they are what they are. Um, but this particular one, I have to have these other two little terminals to run another machine function. So close enough. Make sure I got my, my nut up there before I put it all back. And then we'll just snake this one back up in there. I'll put the fan back in, put the covers back on. But one more quick tip for you. Anytime you got electric motors like this, um, they got permanently sealed bushings. And I like to, if you got a little oil, I like to give a little dab of oil or grease on them because I've seen quite a few of these that are crapped out just because the bearings or bushings have went out. Um, put a little oil on there. Um, this one, the back one, I can't really get to, so I'll just leave that. But generally, I like to give a little douse on the back, a little daub right by the shaft on the front, and that'll push some oil back in there just a little bit and lube up the bearings so this thing spins beautifully. Put this back together, and we'll fire it right up. nice and toasty garage and I can walk around like a summer. If you have a kerosene version of one of these heaters, I have a full tutorial on that as well. I'll put a link below in the description. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, and click on one of these three videos right after and watch one of those. And enjoy. Thanks guys. See you soon. Bye.